hi, a new setup. I am, I've angled this or the camera so the painting is smaller, but you might be able to see me mixing the paints. Uh, we'll see how we go. I hope the focus is okay on this one. I've given the paper a good wet and just let it soak in quite a bit and I've, I've flattened the, well still in the process of flattening the paper as it expands. I'm still using the uh, the new brush, the uh, Pro Art Squirrel number six. I might even get a smaller one than these, this, this one, the number four or something. Then I'll have a two, a four, six and an eight. Um, this has got a beautiful point on it. It's uh, it's squirrel. It's uh, Renaissance by Pro Art. It's a lovely brush. I tried it out yesterday. So I've I've got the newish palette. I've got a yellow ochre, hooker's green, and some raw sienna, a uh, raw umber. I'm not really sure about raw raw umber. It's more for a beach uh, scene. But I, th um, I think I'll, I'll add uh, some burnt umber to that. Uh, I have uh, scraps, paints grey off of that palette, but we can make greys with blues and browns. So I'll add a bit of a bit of burnt umber to that. I won't put great lashings of it out like the other palette. Okay, right. So, so there we are. Um, right. I'm going to uh, put in with my hake, well, with my hake uh, some just a blush of of ochre. This is Fabriano. This is a cheaper Fabriano paper. Uh, a bit of bit of a bit of a lizard in there as well, I think. Just put this all over. I'm going to put it grey made from that burnt umber and ultra. That'll do. I could use the larger mop for this, but we'll see how this goes over. So what a nice nice nondescript sky for this. I'm going to do a sort of a river picture. Okay, where I'm going to put the river, I'm going to uh, just uh, put those colours in, just slightly stronger. And then we'll put in the greys, oh, a bit more of that ochre, just... Okay. So, um, some ultramarine and burnt umber, slightly stronger than the sky I think. To, we, we can wait for that to dry a little bit. That's, uh, so they're the initial washes, they'll all dry lighter. This is yeah, 130 pound weight. It's, it's quite rough when it's dry, but it's quite slick as well. It's not the easiest paper to use, but I've sort of double wet it. Um, so some of it's dry where I've put the well, I haven't put the, the second, the, the, the initial colour washes on. I hope that doesn't go into a colour flower there. So I, I want to put in a bit of a uh, background, so more grey. Oh, I'm not going to use this anymore, am I? I'm using the squirrel. Uh, so, so a nice grey, again, is a darker version of the burnt umber. Keep it on the blue side and that'll do for a sort of a Bit of that, and we'll have a dark bit under there as well. Ok, 
klišeira. Ok, so that will be our bit of greedy colour. Ok, and then we'll have a field. We'll uh, let that wash settle. I'll, I might give it a, a hand with a hair dryer. So headphones off or we'll mute your sound now. All of you who have spent seven or eight pounds on your new hake, I will be going back to the hake, but you've got a thousand videos of me showing the hake over the last four, over four years, so there's plenty to be getting on with. Okay, so um, this is all of a, uh, a, a Norfolk-y type view. I should have got a bit higher there. But anyway, with this, this the mop, I'm going to wet it and need, to, need some cloth in here and put in put in a, a bank or two I use three colours it goes to show isn't it oh, let's get some darker if you're going to paint dark over wet, you need it thick. Okay. I'm going to put in a bit of a reflection. Put a bit of sienna in there, I think. A bit of burnt sienna. Oh. Right, okay, that, that'll do as an underwash for there. So we'll put in a bit of a bit of green. And then we'll put in some darks, the bank, just mix with those colours. And then we'll put a bank on the other on this side, on the right hand side. I mean, fairly dark on this. Blue. And we'll put a bit of reflection of that bank in here. Okay, uh, that's drying nicely. Let's get a bit of heavier stuff in there. There's a bit of green in with that. Quite sure where this point is. Okay, right, let's uh, just get a bit more blue in that. She's sort of a shadowy. Just a few little flicks and flourishes just on the, the bank here. Uh, 
Okay, so let's put in some trees now. A bit of grey. How, how fine I can get this line without using a rigger or the hake. Okay. I'm basically this on a John Tick Tookie painting. I, I love his work, he's so simple or deceptively simple see how simple it is to do, do a tree like that you've got to hold the brush very very gently So it's just a little bit thick, but anyway. Okay, so we'll, we'll put in so another the warmer grey. Just have a bit finer lines. Okay, so we'll put a bit of warmer grey now on, on, on this. Well, just with the side of the brush, the dry brush. I know it, it looks easy when I do it, I have done a lot of it. Okay, so um, we'll need some texture on here. Just flicking the brush up. Okay, so that was that was quite easy. But it is, but as the paper dries, you, you will take this dry brush. We we'll need some some stuff sticking up. Oh, we're going to put some water on the brush.
Okay, so that just gives a, a bit of a, an indication that there's something going on in, in the water. Repeating is what you put above, below, gives the impression of, of uh, reflections. So now we're going to go warmer now. So put in a, a tree, bigger tree, going probably off. So you can get really dark with just the umber, the sienna, or burnt umber, and the, and the ultramarine. Put plenty of wiggles in the, where the, so the buds break. Try to taper. Well, I've only used the one brush so far, but sorry, go on my not showing me. Gotta show me. Lovely, lovely dark. Oh, you can't, you can't paint that fine with, with a brush this size. But it's so tempting to, to reach for the rigger. Ivy up there. Perhaps I will get a smaller one. Right, let's put in some some stuff growing up here. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, well now we need to put in some warmer foliage on that lot. So, oh, that's much too thick. It's about really like the hake, hey, controlling the amount of waters on the brush. Okay, that's a that's a good colour for autumn type leaves. Oh, like that's a bit browner. See, the more, the, the, the more red you go, the warmer it is, and the nearer it looks. And if you want to look a bit as if there's something behind, just do a bit of blue. Or 
plus vrai. Okay, um, I need to put a few more twiggy things in there. Uh, see if we can get a bit of bit of dry brush on this left hand tree. Or this one here. See if we can catch catch the high spots here. And I need to anchor those trunks. Okay, well, that is as simple as I can make it. We'll, uh, I'll sign it, put a mount on it, and we'll have a we'll have a look at it. So, you know, let's see what it looks like. Um, Some reeds, uh, I'll put in a few reeds on the edge here, on the edges. Uh, but I'll just use those colours. Great brush for doing these ripples, these wiggles. Okay, some more dark. But I want water, I want this quite wet. I want it to just for detail, really. Just a few. Alright, I'm going to leave it like that. I want that to dry because it's, it's shiny to the moment. That will dry back. It's dark now, but it won't be dark in a minute. Right, okay, a bit of uh, tape to me. Let me know about the camera position. Oops. Now I'm going to go and phone Alan Owen. I've spoken to him for a few days. We spend a lot of time on the phone, Alan and I. Right, okay, so there's a very simple one to be getting on with. I'll make no apology for the fact that I base it on a John Tookie. I love John Tookie. I love the simplicity he gets and the economy, like Ted Wesson, the economy of, of line or paint with things suggested rather than stated. Uh, right now I'll, I'll bring you around and we'll have a, have a look. Yeah, let me know how how you feel about the new position. Let's just bring that down there. Okay. Right, I'll, uh, I'll zoom in. We'll have a look at the foreground. Is that a manual focus? I don't know if I can get it better. No. I think that's just a good focus from where I am. If you put an automatic focus camcorder, what happens is that 
it focuses on, if you put your hand in front of the camera, it makes this look blurred and it, it, it jumps about. So uh, I think that's quite good actually. Yeah, I need some feedback on all this. Right, I'll do probably do another one later. Or I might not. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.